Today I want to demonstrate and discuss several approaches to the famous FISBUS interview problem in Clojure. In case you're not familiar with FISBUS, it's a simple children's counting game where every third number is replaced by the string FIS, as you can see here, and every fifth one is replaced by the string BUS, and every fifteenth one by the string FISBUS. Okay. Um, Right, so the classic approach in imperative languages uses the modulus operator and in closure that's just the mod function. What does the mod function do? For example, I can say, what is the modulus of, let's say, 10 and 3? Then we will divide 10 by 3 and notice that we have a modulus or a remainder or a rest of 1. For 11, that would be 2. And for 12, it would be 3, uh, I'm sorry, 0, <laughs> because 12 is divisible by 3 with no remainder. Okay, cool. So if we, for example, start with, let's say, a range from 1 to 101, that would look like this. It starts at 1 and ends at 100 because range um, the first parameter is inclusive and the second parameter, the end, is exclusive. So this is a half open or half closed um, range. Okay, so we could simply check whether x is divisible by 3. We could do that with our con macro. The um, condition would be, we say, mod x and 3, and then we check if that is 0. And if that is the case, we want fizz, and otherwise we want x. Okay, and that doesn't work. Cont requires an even number of forms. Right, so I can't simply provide a default value. I have to provide some condition that is always true. For example, true. <laughs> and then we can see, at least for fizz, it works. Every third element is replaced by fizz, even the one uh, here. Okay, but it's more idiomatic in closure to say default or else or any other keywords, right? So any expression other than nil and false will be evaluated to true, if you will, in these condition expressions. Okay, cool. Um, so if we also want the same for bus, we have to copy paste, replace the three by five and then say bus. There we go. Here's our bus. Here's our bus. Um, and of course it doesn't work for 15 years because we haven't implemented that yet here. But I immediately see some Hmm. Nasty code repetition here, so zero mod, hmm, that's not so nice. And it also doesn't really reveal the intent. Why are we calling mod and then checking for zero? What we would like to write is, uh, let me replace this here, we would like to write divisible, let me copy paste that, it's hard to type, <laughs> divisible x3 and divisible x5, that would be much nicer code, and we can achieve that by defining a function called divisible taking, uh, what did the mod function take? num and diff, let's call them the same, num and diff, and then the same code, zero mod num diff, and then this should still work. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a bit nicer to read, a bit more intention revealing. Okay, and then a common mistake. Let's uh, copy paste here and say for 15, we want FISBUS. And you can see it doesn't work. We don't see FISBUS down here. And that's um, the root of this problem is the um, problem description. We said every third number is FIS, every fifth number is BUS, and every 15th number is FISBUS. So we wrote it down like this. But the problem is that 15 is also divisible by 3. That's why we uh, pick the fizz and then we don't check the other conditions, right? Cont always works from top to bottom. So this condition would never be even checked. In order to mitigate this problem, we simply move fizz bus to the very top and then it works again. And it doesn't really matter in which order we check for three and five because those are, what's the correct term, co-prime or something. <laughs> so neither divides the other one. Okay, cool. So. That already works. Um, let me copy paste this because I want to show you a slightly different approach. We still have some code repetition here. So the divisible x is always the same. So all our conditions look rather similar. They're not completely different syntactically. And then instead of cont, we can use cont p, which also takes a 
predicate here and then one parameter and then we can replace this whole thing by 15, this by 3, this by 5. Okay, and then keyword cannot be cast to number. Right, so the provision of the default value works here without uh, the true condition or the default keyword, but the result is complete nonsense. That's because if we look at the documentation, here's essentially what is done with our condition. So the predicate is the divisible function, the test expression is 15, 3 or 5 respectively, and the expression is our x. So we're testing if 15 is divisible by x and not if x is divisible by 15. So, okay, so maybe let's copy the divisible function and just swap the parameters. Let's uh, swap the parameters, num, and then let's say instead of divisible, divides. Okay, compile that and replace it here. And then it still doesn't work. Did I not compile? Oh, for some reason I didn't compile. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. So that works. And I think it uh, quite nicely reflects the problem description, right? We say, well, it depends <laughs> uh, on divides and x. And here are our three cases, 15 fizz bus, three fizz and five bus. It's uh, rather obvious that this now works, right? And if you want to tweak the parameters, these three lines contain your parameters. The um, the um, the diff numbers here and the resulting strings here. Okay, cool. Um, so what could we do next? So what's a little bit sad about this solution is that the division check is performed for every number between 1 and 100. And the division check would be necessary if you handed me some random number, one to three, a thousand, a million. But that's not how the problem is described. It says we start counting at one and then go up one number and every third element is a fizz and every fifth element is a bus and every 15th element is a fizz bus. Can we somehow encode this knowledge or this fact that every third number is a fizz? Um, my approach would be to say, well, fizz is a vector of nil, nil and fizz. There we go. Not a terribly interesting vector as of now, but if we cycle it, then we get an infinite sequence of nil, nil, fizz, nil, nil, fizz, nil, nil, fizz, nil, nil, fizz, and so on. And if we combine that with our range from 1 to 100, we can say every time we see a nil, we pick the number. Here's another nil, let's pick that number. And if we see not nil or a string or whatever, something that is neither nil nor false, then we pick um, the fizz. Then we, we should see one, two fizz, four, five fizz, seven, eight fizz, and so on. Okay, so how would we combine those? We can use the map function. You're probably only used to a single overload that takes a function and a collection, but there's another overload that takes a function and two collections and three and four. I think up to infinity. Um, so we need some function f and then we use our cycle down here and our range down here. And the what's this function? It's a function that takes an a and a b. And now it has to pick between the a and the b. The a comes from the cycle fizz and the b comes from the numbers. So we could say if a is nil then pick b else pick a. But there already is such a macro, it's called or. We can simply say or a, b. It works exactly like that. If a is falsy, b will be picked. Otherwise, a will be picked. Okay, so this should already work, right? Let's see. Yeah, one, two, fizz, four, five, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, and so on. That's looking good. So let's continue that. And let's say we also want the bus that has two additional nils and then a bus instead of a fizz, and then we also want the bus here, like this. And, um, all right, then we need an additional parameter here and we need to pass it onto the OR function. Okay, five is bus, 10 is bus, uh, and here 20 is bus and so on. Okay, cool. So let's continue, this seems to work. So our fizz bus would be <laughs> lots of 
Nils, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 14, and then fist pass. It's also a hard word to spell correctly. And then let's do the same mistake again. Uh, no, that's a different mistake. We need another parameter and pass that down to the OR macro. And you can see it doesn't work because uh, our cycle fizz uh, already uh, uses fizz instead of fizzbuzz because we put fizzbuzz last. We have to put it first for the exact same reason that we put it first um, here. Okay, and then it works again. So that's a quite interesting different solution without the modulus operator. Mm. Yeah, and we can also say how interesting or revealing are those names A, B, C, D. They more or less just say first, second, third, and fourth parameter. So let's simplify that to anonymous function or and then those four parameters, right? Does the exact same thing. That's not more or less cryptic than A, B, C, D in my opinion. Okay, cool. Well, maybe let's do it like this. I don't know. Okay, let's play around with that a bit more. Um, let us get rid of the numbers. And let's get rid of the last parameter. What do we see then? Let me put line breaks after every fizz bus. And then you can see that after the fizz bus, the sequence um, repeats, right? It's always the same sequence of 15 elements. Nil, nil, fizz, nil, bus, fizz, nil, nil, fizz, bus, nil, fizz, nil, nil, fizz, bus and so on. Um, that's because, of course, if you look at the lengths, we have length 3, length 5, length 15, 3 divides 15, 5 divides 15. So we expect those cycles to converge after 15 elements. So we could um, optimize our program and say instead of three of those vectors, let's just use a single one, this one here. Okay, maybe it's optimized. Let's unroll them. I don't know what the correct <laughs> term for this is. So let's say Def, I don't know, wheel, and then put it down here. Okay, that's our little wheel, and then we only need the wheel down here, and then we have our range, and then we need two parameters instead of three, and that should still work. Let's see. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, maybe a little more cryptic than the above solution, but I don't know if it's more um, performant, but I think it's interesting that you can solve FISBUS without the need for divisibility checks, right? Okay, um, let me optimize this a bit more for readability. Yeah, I think that's quite more readable. Now you can immediately see it's 15 elements. Should we do it here as well? Let's see. Yeah, maybe that's not the worst idea. A little aligning here and there can make code much more readable, if, if it has these inherent patterns, of course. Yeah, I think maybe now it's a bit better. Okay, so I've seen a lot of uh, negative critique of the FISBUS interview problem. You know, which Java program has ever used the modulus operator, or maybe it has been a couple of years. Yeah, maybe that's a fair critique. But of course, you can look this up or ask the interviewer or whatever, right? Um, but still, it's not a common operator to use in everyday um, Java programming or other mainstream languages. But if you look at the um, two last solutions, so I would expect every closure programmer to know nil and strings, vectors, map, or cycle, range. This is standard closure tool set, maybe after four or eight weeks of closure. So I don't know, just from a syntax perspective or, or language power perspective, I think every closure programmer should be able to understand this. Um, Maybe it's not so obvious to <laughs> to come to this approach. I don't say this is better than the approach above, but I think it's, as I said, as I said it's interesting um, as an alternative to the classic approach that you don't even need the um, the check, the modulus check. Um, and I guess there are even more interesting solutions to the FISBUS problem in Clojure. Um, I'm not, for example, I'm not sure if this could be written down more. Uh, understandably, or if there already is a built-in function for that. So, for example, what you can't do is simply write map or, 
right? You could say, isn't this just a, a function that takes two parameters and forwards it to another function that takes two parameters? But um, since all is a macro, we can't pass it uh, to the map function. That's a that's an error message that you will see sooner or later in your closure um, adventure. Yeah, so if you have um, an interesting solution that looks neither like this uh, or like this or like this, um, I would love to read them in the comment section below. Bye!